Hello everybody, this is Mark Schaffline with Market Mover TV, and I'd like to welcome a very special guest to the show today. Gene Langmesser, happy to have you with us today. Welcome to Market Mover TV. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be here, and thank you for having me. Hey, Gene, you've got an exciting new company, eSight Motors. Yes. Tell us a little about your background and how you came to eSight Motors and uh, share with our audience, you're, you've had a very colorful career in the automotive business. Okay, I'll try and share some of it. Um, I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Grew up around cars my entire life. Uh, started out working for General Motors, did a tenure with them, and also went to the University of Michigan uh, on GM. Uh, then I moved to, to uh, Germany with uh, Porsche Engineering. Uh, I worked in their studios as a studio engineer in Weissach, Germany. Um, then uh, bought a car studio in California, in uh, Southern California by the LA area, and started out building show cars and custom cars. Oh, wow, exciting stuff. I mean, that's like top of the line, high tech, cutting edge uh, design work. Yes, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, really got to sink my teeth into it. So, Gene, eSight Motors, you're part of that now. You're the chief operating officer of the company, and you sit on the board of directors. Talk a little bit about eSight Motors. Talk a little about your old business that you had into a Motors, and sort of tie them in uh, about what motivated you to do into a Motors, and then come to eSight. Okay. Well, eSight Motors is a new company. Um, starting out doing electric vehicles. Um, and we're going to build retro electric vehicles. Um, they called me up, uh, knew about N2A Motors, which is no tool like motors. I had that company for about, I guess, about 15 years. And um, we built uh, custom and concept vehicles, a uh, lot of really cool things, the 789, um, the Anteros, the Devil Ray. And then we did cars for other people also. We did some supercars uh, like the Nemesis. Um, we did uh, the Lamarck, uh, different vehicles like that. And uh, I think we can do a lot together with the Eastside Motors. They, uh, took myself, put me in a nice position with their company, and they bought the N2A uh, moniker and everything to do with N2A Motors, which is very nice. N2A Motors did a lot of work with celebrities and movies, and you did some pretty exotic stuff on a very, very high level that I'm sure a lot of our viewers and listeners, they're gonna say, yeah, I remember that car from that scene. Tell, tell our audience a little bit about some of that. Okay, yes, we did movie cars. Uh, things like the Taxi and the Queen Latifah, Jimmy Fallon Taxi movie. Um, we did uh, Battlestar Galactica. We did the Lexus and the Minority Report. Um, some of the movie cars we did. We also built uh, a lot of celebrity vehicles. Uh, a few very well-known people are in 789s, which was one of our most famous vehicles. Um, we uh, built uh, we built so many different concept cars and uh, that were our custom cars that were out there. Like uh, we did the Nikola truck, the original yeah. hydrogen truck. Uh, we built all the body, all the uh, interior, uh, everything that you see on the vehicle except for the chassis and drivetrain, which was done by Nikola. Uh, so the very first one, we built all carbon fiber truck, the first and only carbon fiber truck. Wow, Gene, that's interesting. So you basically went to college, General Motors took care of your education, you parlayed that into some of the top German technology with the major manufacturers in Germany, came back here, started your own business, ran with it with Hollywood types, put basically cars out there that are well known in movies, formed your company, and now you're going to be part of eSight and you're going to take that wealth of knowledge to help this new electric vehicle company that has such promise. That is all very true, and I'm very excited to be a part of this. You know, um, what brought you to Nikolai? Because Nikolai is a New York Stock Exchange traded company. I think it's traded down to around $12 a share or so right now. Been as low as three and as high as in the 50s or 60s. But uh, Nikolai has a new chief executive officer, and you were recruited by Nikolai for that hydrogen truck. How did you and Nikolai come together? Well, actually, we it was... Um, when they first started out, they were in Utah, 
and uh, they were building their truck. It was just a design um, and an idea, and they came to me to actually put this vehicle to a functioning, looking, touch, feel and touch piece of material that they could actually show. So that was for their unveiling of the original first vehicle. So like I said, we built the entire carbon fiber body, which was huge, 14 feet by yeah. 30 feet. Oh. And uh, we did all the interior, did the glass, did everything on it, the mirrors, the lighting, and everything to make this fantastic show vehicle for them to unveil at their show. Well, I remember when they unveiled it. I mean, that was big news all over the major media, all across the country, the business channel, CNBC. I mean, you got a lot of significant publicity from that hydrogen truck, Gene. Nicola got a lot of well, publicity from that. you and Nicola. Yeah. I, mean, we'll I was contracted to build it, or <laughs> N2A Motors was contracted to build that, and we built it. So. You're a modest yeah. guy, Gene, right. <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, talk a little bit about now. Let's get into some some of the details because uh, I basically, uh, from what I've uh, seen, you're going to talk a little bit about skateboard chassis. Explain a little bit of that, and because I'm going to get a little technical here for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, because some of our audience, uh, basically, folks, a, a lot of you sent in questions through the website, through the company, and we've tried to get as many as we possibly could to Gene so we could address those. So. Talk a little bit about the skateboard style chassis and how that ties in, Jimmy. Okay, well, the skateboard style chassis is basically a flat chassis that uh, looks like a skateboard. And there's two different styles. There's one that uses a motor and an axle that runs uh, the, the electric batteries that runs through the motor and the axles. And it's kind of set up similar to a normal vehicle and then there's the flat platform chassis that's just the batteries and it has hub motors on the wheels how does that how does it all interact between the hub motors and, and the chassis what walk them through a little bit and what's going to distinguish eSight from other companies okay well it's uh i don't i don't want to get too much into detail detail right. about the hub motors and how that all works but most, most likely we are developing the vehicle as a skateboard chassis with hub motors on the wheels and we're gonna drive those wheels so we'll have different vehicles out for different levels of an entry level type vehicle, meaning that it might only have 150, 200 horsepower, nice commuter type vehicle with a cool retro look on it. Nice. Um, so it might have a hub motor on one or two of the rear wheels. Uh, where you might go to a full 250 horsepower per wheel for all four wheels and have a thousand horsepower supercar oh, wow. uh, or SUV or whatever we end up creating down the road. So. Wow, that's great stuff, Gene. It, it's really cutting edge stuff that you're doing. Yes, you have to be cutting edge in this world. To <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right, now let me ask you this. One thing that's of every car buyer's concern, not every, but a lot of people, safety concerns out there you know because you know you hear the stories and the media likes to blow it up every time tesla has a problem with a battery and some driver does something stupid or is not paying attention something happens it, it gets sensationalized maybe one out of x number talk about the safety of v site motors and, and and how that's going to play into this okay well part of the um 2015 act for the uh, retro vehicles or being able to recreate these retro vehicles is that you don't have to meet crash criteria okay oh, that's a biggie. but we are my background i started out at general motors and uh, in my background when i started with general motors i was in their safety group their restraint group and safety uh, doing seat belts and airbag development and uh, I was very involved with that. And I actually, one of my major projects I worked on was the development of the crash car dummy. So we developed all the, all the criteria for that thing crashing in, where it's gonna, its head hits, where its knee hits, uh, what impact it has in its chest and all of this. So I have a very large background in the safety industry um, and safety features. So we're gonna put, my knowledge into this vehicle for the safety of this vehicle, even though we are not required to meet those standards, we're going to do the best to make this vehicle as safe as possible. Well, I would expect nothing less based upon your background and everything you've been doing over your career, Gene. I mean, and that speaks well for eSight too, that someone with your caliber and your background is really at the forefront, basically, of, of making sure all those safety features are in it. Well, thank you. Gene, another question that came from our audience, okay, related to what type of cars 
will the company be designing, developing, and manufacturing? And ultimately, is it going to be entry level, high entry level, exotic type cars? Uh, and I know it's still early on, but could you give them a, sort of just an estimate of where you think the range is going to be for what type of cars uh, the okay. company will put in? Uh, I'll, I'll do my best. We're not releasing a lot of that information yet. It's still in development, and you're going to have to follow us a little bit on eSight Motors to kind of you know, stay involved sure. with it, but we are getting to those. We don't want to release the information too soon, but we're probably going to be in the high entry level type of range to start uh, on that one on one vehicle, and then we're going to grow all the way through the luxury and the sports car and the supercars. So when you say what is a high level entry entry level vehicle, okay, it's going to be retro, which retro means something 25 years old or older. Okay. We're going to make that vehicle, so we're going to bring back some of the styling that I've done in the past from N2A Motors and all of these, the cool lines and features that the older cars had that a lot of people can't afford to buy or they can't afford to drive or they're not mechanically inclined, so they don't know how to take care of it, right? And we're going to try and bring those back and make them... I don't want to call it dummy proof, but yeah, yeah you know, in sure. a way, right? So it's going to be all electric technology. It's going to be um, all, it'll be high tech on the inside of the car. The interior feel will be more like a new car, but the looks will still give you that retro classic look that everyone loves to see and drive. So, and this will be an everyday driver. So the commuter might be a smaller sports car style that we're going to try and get some room in it so you can still, you know, throw in you some groceries or whatever, but it might be a two-seater, but it's going to be something that you can take around and, uh, you know, do your regular drive back and forth to work, have a nice sound system in the car, have uh, your maps and all of that stuff in it, and still have a cool look. Like, uh, you know, I'm not throwing it out, but it could be like a 550 Spider. It could be, uh, you know, a ja Jag E-Type, uh, DB4, yeah. or something like that. Uh, some Bond stuff. Yeah, yeah. oh, James Bond. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. And then we're going to also do luxury vehicles. We're going to do supercar style. And we anticipate doing um, SUV. Um, so it's all a development part. So, you know, for investors out there taking a look at the show, it's not you're not going to be doing like basic entry level stuff. This is going to be a little bit more high end and then really much higher end on some of the more exotic type stuff that you're looking at. Correct, correct. And then you can, like I said, you got like different horsepower options and different options on the car. So you may say, well, I just want something to drive to work that looks cool and I don't want to, you know, break the bank. So we say, okay, we'll give you, you know, 150 horsepower in this little sports car here and you can drive and work and you don't look like you're driving, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, right. I don't want to really use a company's no, name. No, 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 I get it. I, I, I get that. We don't, we don't want to be too, too much there. Let me ask you this, Gene, because um, I know, you know you're still in early stage, okay, but how is eSight Motors planning on marketing uh, the cars, and will people be able to order it? Sort of like, you, I'm using Tesla as an example, but how, you know, you could, will they be able to go to the website and order? Is it going to be more business to consumer or B2B? How, how will... How in a nutshell, and I know it's early, mm -hmm. but how are, you, how are you and the company management thinking about marketing the cars? Okay, yes, very early. Um, it's still being developed again, but uh, the marketing on it, our, our plan, or uh, you know, our, we anticipate having uh, starting out business to, uh, to, uh, to customer, B2C, mm -hmm. and delivering that vehicle, orders online. You can go to our website, place an order, pre place pre-orders, and we'll be developing those vehicles. Uh, we'll have them out there, which ones we're creating and which ones are ready for pre-orders and which ones are coming next and things like that. And that'll, you know, tease the audience, if you want to call it, right? Oh, sure. So get them ready. And then we're going to do develop micro dealerships around the country, actually around the world, and have those dealerships handle the sales to the people or the, the delivery of the vehicle to the people, right? right. Yeah. So the sales will probably be held in the, by the main company and our website and, uh, you know, electronically, which everything is nowadays. Everything is nowadays, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah they, you're, you're, this is a completely different business model than the old days of you know, Ford, GM, the dealers, the lots, and even the way Tesla does it, because Tesla's got some dealerships and they got ways you can order and, you know, uh, Lucid Motors and to name a few. I mean, this is a really different concept, yeah. but it's gonna, it's an exciting concept, particularly for people that are really car aficionados. Yeah, yeah. 
and we're going to have some really cool stuff out there. We will have um, some cars that people always dreamed about having, and we will be building those. Gene, will it, like the cars all have VIN numbers like tra traditional cars would have? All the cars will have U.S. VIN numbers, and um, all the cars will be resemble old cars. They will not be old cars. Sure. So we are not going to take an old Ferrari 250 GTO and destroy it. Right. And it's a million dollar car <laughs> to start with and put electric motors. We are going to recreate something that has, resembles the looks of those old vehicles so you can drive around in a classy, cool looking car and, and have fun with it. And, and people will be able to drive these cars on the street, correct, Gene? Normal, normal street driving? Yes, yes. Everything will be street legal. Okay, street legal, yep. folks. And we got an international question that came, it was speaking of James Bond and the British. Yeah. Will there be right side driving on these cars? Yes, we'll be making left hand and right hand drive. Folks, yes. that's, that is pretty, pretty exciting stuff. And Gene, I take it the cars will be American made, American built? Yes, they will. The uh, batteries and technology like that, we buy batteries wherever we can. They may be Chinese, they may be, right now, the majority of the batteries are Chinese, but we are developing a lot in the States, and we will be using what we can from the U.S. And some of the big issues that the car companies have now, Gene, there's supply chain issues. These are the big manufacturers. Mm -hmm. You know, with, with everything going on, with uh, shortage of, of uh, computer chips that are used in cars, some of the materials, the battery technology, Given eSight's business plan, do you think that will affect you, or do you think you can get around that based upon you know what the company is looking to do as far as building out the vehicles? Yeah. Well, we're not going to become a technology company. We're not developing our own battery and drivetrain, so okay. we're, we are going to purchase that. We may have some you know supply chain issues, but we shouldn't. We're buying a lot less quantities than the OEs, right? right? We're not buying five hundred thousand batteries a year, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, so we should have a lot less of a problem with that and being able to deliver our vehicles. Um, we are going to always be using the cutting edge because we are always developing smaller quantities, and that's mm -hmm. part of the reason for staying in the smaller quantities and becoming a low volume manufacturer, not a high volume manufacturer. So we should not experience the supply chain issues like others. Right. Plus all the body parts, all the uh, you know suspension, all that, we're buying, we're creating ourselves, we're buying locally. So it's the actual drivetrain that right now is all developed overseas. And the cars will be manufactured in the United States. They will be manufactured and assembled in the United States. Well, yes. Gene, this is really exciting stuff. And folks, um, for full disclosure, Gene, we had dinner last night yeah. and we really just scratched the surface of the interview yeah, today. Just... Look, it would be my pleasure to have welcome you back and hopefully you can come back and join us so that we can really dig a little bit deeper and some of the questions that we couldn't get to today if you'd be so kind, we'll follow through with those um, if you would agree to come back. I would love to, and it'd be a lot nicer if I could answer some of those questions for you. So. <laughs> well, Gene, what we'll do is we'll get the ones we didn't get to today. And again, folks, thank you for taking the time to send those into the company's webpage. Please continue to send them in. We'll try to get to those questions in the future. And Gene, again, uh, my privilege. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Okay, great. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Gene is a terrific guy, and we hope for the best for Eastside Motors and Vapor. Thanks for viewing today.